that doesn't really cut the mustard. What you really want to say is, what power does a, a rav of a shul have? Is he makes them firmer, right? He, yeah. he makes them firmer. He has a, he, or he, you know, yeah, yeah. That he makes everybody have an attitude that's more firm. That is a measuring stick. Of course, it's hard to quantify, but that's a better measuring stick than how much the Torah you're learning. Rob Miller got people to learn 40 hours a week in his shul. But all of his talks, all of his uh, shirim were, were blended together with talks where he would give the muser on how you have to learn Torah and do mitzvahs. And how important mitzvahs are. And, 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 and if you're not telling people how important it is to do the Torah and mitzvahs, then they end up in a shul where they don't see how it's important. Oh, he missed it by missed that much. By, missed it by that, that much. much. He missed it by that much. You know, what a you, live by, you live by it, you die by it. Flacco almost slipped out of bounds, but he was safe yeah, by, by yeah, a foot, yeah. and, the, and the kick didn't go that foot. So you know what? You get it there, and you, it's a game of inches, lady. It's a game of inches. How about DeMarco Murray, 253 yards yesterday? Who is he? Rookie running back for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I didn't even... I couldn't watch that game because my team was getting his ass kicked. Right? <laughs> St. Louis is your team. Yeah, I'm a Ram fan from way back. You know who the, the, the team to watch this year? I cha Oh, we're like six or seven weeks in. Yeah. And I told you I'm not going to yeah. make a prediction on the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. It's clear to me what's happening. It's already starting okay. to unfold. Okay, I, I'm going to... I will say Green Bay and, no. and okay. New England. Okay. And, and uh, say Green Bay's best team. Go ahead. Okay. Green Bay is the best team right now on paper yeah. with their record, yeah. Yeah. but I, I, I see that the team that to be scared of is mm -hmm. the San Francisco 49ers. Why? They, they went into the Detroit and beat them. This team is for real. This team is legit. The 49ers have what it takes this year. It's the year. same team that went like 6 and 10 last year. That doesn't like matter. They haven't changed personnel or they've changed as They've gotten better. They've just gotten better they as got a team. they got Alex Smith as quarterback. They, like they, he's terrible they went into Detroit and won, and I said, I get it now. This team is, is, is why legit. Do you, why do you think they're legit? They've got a great record, and they've beaten real teams. They've been challenged. Yeah, the every game, game's been close. Every game, the only game they lost was to your Dallas in yeah. overtime. Yeah. That's how much it takes to lose. They're in every game, and now they're winning them. Whereas last year they were in the games, but they would lose them. Yeah. They found their ways to win. I really think the 49ers are the team to win. They're going to end up playing like Green Bay in the playoffs, and I think that the 49ers are going to beat them. Right? The Green Bay is going to have a better record at the end of the year, but so what? In the playoffs is what counts, and I think the 49ers are going to take them down. Because Green Bay is still suffering from second-year disease. I told you about that before. They're suffering from that, and they're not going to take it as, like, the 49ers are hungry. So I think that they're the team in the NFC right now. In the AFC, New England, New England looks pretty good. <clears throat> I'm impressed with this Baltimore team. They're running the record up to 7-1 and one tonight, or 6-1 and one tonight. Or five and one. What are they? I think they're 5-1 and one right now. Yeah, I think that they're good. I think it's a little bit premature to say who's going to take over, but it's going to be between Baltimore and New England. I see them as the, uh, the two teams. If I had to put, probably New England. Probably New England is going to pull this thing off in the playoffs. They've been there before. But I would not count Baltimore out. They've, both teams you should never bet against. Well, I mean, you have, do you think Joe Flacco is capable of taking them to the Super Bowl? I think that their defense is capable of stopping Tom Brady. Yeah. It, the, the, the AFC Finals may very well be... Baltimore versus New England, especially if they both get buys in the first round. They both beat some easy guy in the second round, and then they face each other in the final round. I don't even know who's going to be at home. If it's in New England, I think New England will win. If it's in See how we've been able to watch the whole game? Like it's been flawless, basically. Yeah. Holiday. <laughs> if it's, um, if it's the if, World Series and simultaneously the Monday Night Football. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you like this. If Baltimore win, if it has the home advantage against New England in that mm -hmm. game, Baltimore will win. You heard it here first. Mm. And then when Baltimore plays San Francisco, San Francisco's going to win the Super Bowl. You think the 49ers are going to win the Super Bowl? Unless they play in New England. I think New England can beat them. Wow. I really have a lot of respect for the 49ers. Wow. And they'll be battle-tested after they and beat Green Bay. And it's all due to Jim Harbaugh, because with a different coach, they did nothing. Last Could be. Last Could well be. Years. Could well be. All right, so what are we saying here? What are we talking about? We're saying less and hard about every show in town. We're trashing them all. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so this week's Torah portion is Noach. Okay, oh, yeah, let's wrap it up. It's already 9 o'clock. So it's not the trauma. We, we might as well go to the end of the game. 
it's not the trauma of the flood itself that so depresses Noah as much as it is that somehow he has not found a way to communicate his message to his society and even to his own family. It's Rabbi Beryl Wine. He had told little about Noah after his family disappointments of on emerging from the ark. He's apparently sapped of his will to influence others after so many years of being rejected. He sees no basic difference in post-flood humanity and pre-flood humanity. So we we're talking about like a rabbi can influence a synagogue. Oh, that's what we're talking about. But Noah couldn't influence the pre-flood generation. They wouldn't listen to him. Did he even say anything? I'm not sure. Did he even say anything? Good question. Well, here's what here's here's the famous board. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill Cosby says this. <laughs> he says for 150 years he was building. Yeah, a like, boat like what are you doing? Flood. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm building a boat. It's gonna rain, right? Yeah, they're gonna flood the world. It's gonna flood the world. You know, yeah. Everybody thinks he's like a crazy. You know, he's like one of these crazy guys. You know, homeless and building a boat. He's a nut job. Okay. Uh, and, and one of these end of time guys, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, one of these Seven Day Adventist creatures. Right, you know? right. Everything's coming to an end, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so the question is, did he try to put people on the boat, and they all just said, "No, we're not interested," or did he just like he was good with it? It was like, I, "I've got my boat, leave me alone, do my right. own thing," right? So, which way was it? Is the question. Was he out? Was he trying to get people to save themselves? get on the boat with him, yeah. or was he just like, I'm good doing it on my own? Yeah. What's the answer? Well, that's the famous roar. Oh, okay. You know, it's like, was he a tzaddik, or was he, like, you know, just content? So who do you think is going to win this game? Jacksonville's up by two with a minute 48, Jacksonville's kicking. Who do you think is going to win? Before the, uh, we'll wait until they kick the field goal. Uh, oh. Uh, I think Baltimore is going to pull this off. <laughs> really? Yeah. Even though they're down by five. If Baltimore does not pull this game off, yeah. then I will go with you. With New England's going to win, it's going to take it and get home advantage and go to the Super Bowl. Probably win it, right? So it all comes down to this minute forty-eight. <laughs> if Baltimore wins this minute forty-eight, right? Right. And, and then they will go to the very likely, very likely they will go to the Super Bowl and lose to San Francisco. What do you think of? Orthodox synagogues that uh, that ban alcohol except for for a kiddush. Good. And why do you say that? Because drinking is not part of Jews. It's not a Jewish zach. It's not a Jewish thing to drink and get drunk. That's a, a goyim get drink and, yeah. and get yeah. drunk. You know, that's not a Jewish thing. Yeah. You know, like we get drunk on Purim, but even then, and Torah tells us you shouldn't uh, get so drunk that you become like. Uh, can't tell the difference between. No, no, no! You shouldn't do anything that's uh, control yourself and do don't do anything immoral or anything. Yeah. You know? um, there's no reason at all to drink on Simchas Torah. Right. That's not a time to get to drink. And you know, I I uh, I live near a Chabad and I watch every year as the ambulance pulls up. It's very entertaining. I go outside and smoke a cigar while the ambulance arrives. And on Simchas Torah. Yeah. It's, or, it's, and, on, on, and on, 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 no, not on Purim, but on Simchas Torah night, they always show up with the ambulance. Why? Because somebody always drinks too much and can, you know can't handle the liquor or whatever, and and, it, and it's such a chil Hashem. The whole thing's stupid because you're not even supposed to drink on Simchas Torah. There's no reason to do it. It's not it's not written in the Torah anywhere that you know you should drink on Simchas Torah. It should be Simchas Torah, not Simchas Yain. And in Lubavitch, unfortunately, they um, they they think it's Simchas uh, Torah, but it's just Simchas Yain, and they think oh you know we're gonna drink, and that's what goes on. Your, what you just said, should, you should share it with your Chabad friends because they think they don't come up with any excuse at all every night of the year to drink and have a Ferengi. We're all going to drink and get drunk together. You know? And that's like a big part of their whole cult behavior is everybody like, let's get together every night and drink together and become like this thing. And, you know, and there's no, it's, not, it's, not a, it's, not, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with Judaism. It's outside of Judaism. Right, and a lot of these people are probably alcoholic, and they should probably be spending their time sobering up and going to going to meetings with you with the uh, what is it the twelve step meetings. Twelve step meetings, <laughs> higher power folks. Yeah, here's a here's a quick here's a quick thing. You know, mm -hmm. if when I go and then I can say this from personal experience because I, I I'm addicted to alcohol and I'm not allowed to have it. I haven't had a drink in almost thirty years. Right, yeah. not even one drink maybe. I cannot right. have a drink. I go I. I I stopped going into Lubavitch and play on times like uh, Simchas Torah and mm -hmm. um, Purim. Because they push it on you? Yeah, because there's always some dick who doesn't understand. He's like, come on, just drink, you know, and then he's drunk. Like, some asshole's drunk and he starts pushing you. He gets 